If you're looking for an incredibly affordable way to level out your 2009 or newer four-wheel drive Ram 1500, this mammoth three-inch front, two-inch rear leveling kit will be a great way to do it. Now, I do want to mention that this kit is going to exclude the Rebel and TRX models as well as the Rams that have the air ride suspension from the factory, so just keep that in mind when taking a look at this kit. Now, this is going to be a great pick for the Ram owner, not really looking to completely swap out their suspension, but still wants to add a mild lift to improve their ground clearance if they're taking their truck off-road or on the work site. Now, not only will this be good for some better ground clearance if you're taking your truck on the dirt, but also for the Ram owner who's looking to improve their street presence on-road with a more defined stance to their truck and allowing a little bit more room for a larger tire. Now this kit is going to keep it to the basics, featuring front strut and rear coil spacers, as well as all of the hardware in the kit to get this all done. Again, making this very straightforward, yet still offering you the benefits of a lift and leveling kit. Now those benefits being increased ground clearance for off-road to improve your approach, departure, and breakover angles, as well as a more aggressive stance and the ability to fit a larger tire. Now three inches of lift will allow you to fit up to a 35 inch tire on your Ram, however, depending on the tread, you may have to do some minor plastic trimming. Now, if you want to avoid any modification at all, 33 is going to fit best, so keep that in mind when you're taking a look at tire sizes. This kit is going to be very durable when it comes to the construction and long lasting with a CNC machine billet aluminum construction. The spacers will also have a black anodized finish on top to protect the aluminum underneath from any corrosion and keep these looking and functioning as new for years to come. Now I do want to note that the front spacers themselves are going to measure out to one and seven eighths of an inch. However, with the spring compression combined with the suspension geometry, that's going to achieve that three inches of lift in the front. Now the rears, because they are on a solid axle, they are going to measure out true to two inches. I do also want to mention, although they aren't required with a three inch lift in the front, I also would recommend taking a look at some upper control arms to help out with alignment for even tread wear and maintain factory like drivability. And you can find a ton of options right here on our site. Now this kit as a whole is going to come in at about $150, again being an incredibly affordable solution to lift and level your truck. Now compared to other options, this will come with the basics, which I think is great if you're looking for an entry level and affordable choice when it comes to getting better function and better aesthetics for your truck. This is also a great kit to add on to other suspension components and allows you to build and customize your suspension over time. Again, for a quality components at $150, you really can't beat it with the benefits that this offers. This kit is going to be a tougher two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter and with the right setup and tools, it should probably take you about three hours to get the job done. Now, I also do wanna point out that you will need an alignment after install, so make sure that you schedule that for the day after you put this on your truck. However, at this point, we can head over to our shop and show you the details on how to get this onto your truck. So that is going to wrap it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into the install. The tools you'll need for this project are a half inch impact and or a half inch ratchet, a 3 8 ratchet, an eight millimeter socket, a short extension, a 5 16 Allen wrench, a 17, a 16, a 21, and a 35 or 36 millimeter socket, a pair of needle nose pliers, a pry bar, a 21, a 15 16, a 15 and an 18 millimeter wrench, a caliper hanging device, and a dead blow hammer. And you'll also need to use a jack or a set of jack stands if you're using it on a lift. Hi everyone, today we're installing a leveling kit on our Ram, but first let's watch a short video on how to uninstall the stock system. All right, to kick things off, I'm gonna show you guys how to uninstall your factory strut here on our front driver's side. Now, of course, you wanna get your wheel out of the way. That's step number one. We're supported on a lift, but if you're working on the floor, make sure you have a floor jack properly supporting the weight of the vehicle. Moving on from there, we'll have to disconnect the ABS lines from the knuckle and from the brake line itself, just to make sure that when the knuckle drops down out of the upper control arm, we're not putting too much stress on those brake lines. All right, so for this ABS line, just follow it down to the back of your knuckle here. That's connected with a plastic clip. Just gonna wiggle that back and forth till it pops up. Now you wanna follow that guy up to the top here. That's connected to your brake line. That you're just gonna pull apart just like that. Now we have more slack on our brake line, so we're not putting tension on them. 
Next up, grab a 16 millimeter deep socket and we're gonna remove the factory nut off of our sway bar end link. All right, set that aside. All right, next up, we're gonna disconnect our tie rod end. Now, before we get started, you wanna know that this is a 21 millimeter nut. Now, in some cases, if you use an impact gun on this, the entire stud will spin in that ball joint. You may need a 10 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench to get the nut off while holding that stud steady. For our first time, I'm gonna use our 21 millimeter deep socket in my air gun to get this guy off. All right, so ours didn't give us any trouble, but that is still worth noting. Now, before I take this guy out, I'm actually gonna leave it in and just put that nut a couple of threads on just to keep the entire hub assembly from rotating while tackling the upper control arm. All right, so next we're gonna do the upper control arm to the knuckle. Now, Ram uses a castle nut here, which has these open gaps all the way around, and through one of the gaps going through the stud itself is a metal retaining pin. We're gonna use needle nose pliers to pull that pin straight out. All right, set that aside. Now for this, I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I highly recommend picking up a set of ratcheting wrenches for this install. There's a lot of different aspects of this that ratcheting wrenches will be a lot easier to use. All right, so once we broke that loose, I can back this off with my hand. Now, big thing to remember is we have to dislodge the ball joint from the knuckle. You can see that this stud didn't break free with that. So I'm gonna leave this nut on a couple of threads. We're gonna grab our hammer and we're gonna swing and tap against here to dislodge that. And then we'll use a pry bar to pull it down and take our nut off. Now for this, you wanna grab a ball peen hammer and we're gonna tap right up against the side here of the knuckle. With that dislodged, you'll see that the upper control arm moves freely in there. Let's take our nut off. Once you have the castle nut and spacer out, set those aside. All right, so from here, we can go back to the tie rod end, take that nut off, lift the tie rod end out. And I like to hang it up over that sway bar end link and then put our nut back on the stud just so we don't lose it. Here we can lift the upper control arm out of the knuckle. And what I like to do is just grab the upper control arm castle nut and thread it right back on again so we don't lose it, just like the tie rod end. All right, next up, we're gonna tackle the bottom strut bolt, holding it to the lower control arm. Now, the nut here, I'm gonna use a 15 16 deep socket on my impact gun, and I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt head on the inside. At this point, you can grab a ball peen hammer and just tap the end of that to pop it through. Some cases, you may be able to pull it straight out. If not, you can grab a flathead screwdriver and just stick it in there and hammer the back end of that. All right, so now we can focus on the top three strut tower nuts. Now grab a 15 millimeter wrench and I'm gonna use again the 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Again, this really comes in handy. We're gonna loosen up these three top nuts. All right, so now our strut is free. I'm gonna use a pry bar here between the lower control arm and the strut body at the bottom to pry this guy out of position. All right, to kick off the uninstall in the rear, we've got our ram up in the air, and I have two pole jacks supporting our rear axle. Now, if you're working on the ground, you'll want a hydraulic jack under the pumpkin or the differential, or you can put two hydraulic jacks, one on both sides of the differential. Now, that's gonna help support the weight. As we disconnect some suspension components, that's gonna hold that up, and then we'll slowly lower both sides down to release the tension on the spring in order to insert our leveling kit. Now, with that out of the way, I have an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench, which is gonna go a long way to help us get this off, and I also have a quarter inch ratchet with an eight millimeter socket. I'm gonna first focus on disconnecting our sway bar end link. Now, I'm not gonna disconnect the side connecting it to the frame. I'm gonna disconnect the sway bar from the end link. That's an eight millimeter nut. Now, the reason I have both of these in my hand is because once I start loosening this up, the entire stud likes to spin, 
To get around that, I'm gonna put my 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench on our nut here. And I'm gonna put the eight millimeter socket on the end to hold the stud steady. And then I'm gonna loosen this guy up. That way, stud stays still and we can get the nut off. For the rear with a solid rear axle, you're gonna do both sides at the same time. Take it off by hand. Now what I like to do is once that's disconnected, pull the end link out. What I like to do is just put the nut on the end just so we don't lose it. So now we're gonna do this on the other side. All right, and with that other side out of the way, the sway bar is free, you can swing that down. Next up, we're gonna disconnect our pan hard bar. Now the pan hard bar connects the axle to the frame. So it's connected to the axle on our driver's side and the frame on the passenger. So we only have to do one side. Just gotta get it disconnected from one or the other. So I'm gonna start here. Now this bolt goes all the way through and has a nut on the other side with a tab. So because of that tab, we're not gonna to need to hold the nut side. That'll hit the frame and hold itself. So I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter socket to get this guy off. So the nut came off. There we go, and that's free. All right, now on the opposite side of our coil spring is our shock. We need to disconnect the shock from the bottom here where the 21 millimeter bolt goes through. Now I've got a 21 millimeter wrench holding on our nut and my 21 socket on the bolt head side. All right, so now we can just repeat that on the other side to tackle the shock bolt. All right, at this point, the only thing keeping this axle up right now are these two pole jacks. Now again, if you're working on the ground, you'll have a hydraulic jack most likely. If that is the case, this is the part we're gonna start decompressing. So we're gonna slowly lower these pole jacks down one by one to evenly bring this down and decompress our spring. Now again, if you're using that hydraulic jack, don't send it. You wanna make sure you're going very slowly decompressing it. Otherwise, these things can get a little violent shooting out of their spot. So slowly decompress and then we'll pop the spring off. So I do a couple of turns on one side because now this is uneven, I'll do the other side and kind of bring it down incrementally. All right, once it starts decompressing, you'll start to hear a little bit of creaking coming from the coils. That's letting you know it's close to fully decompressed and you just saw it fall out. So this guy's completely loose and we're good to bring her down. Same thing on the other side. Once you can twist it, there's no more pressure or tension on it. So now at this point, we're just bringing it down low enough that we can get the spring actually out. All right, there you have it. All right, next step here, we're gonna get our spring out of place. And that rubber isolator at the top looks like this. Just wanna make sure that's still here. First thing we need to do on our install is we need to install our spacer block on our front strut. Now, this is a three inch leveling kit for the front, but you'll notice that the spacer itself is only measures about two inches. The reason for that is when the geometry changes after you install this, it will raise it to the three inches. So don't worry about the fact that there's a discrepancy between the actual size and the advertised size. So first thing we're gonna do is install these three studs into the spacer itself so that we can attach it to the shock tower on the truck. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take these studs insert them into the hole and screw them in until they seat and lock them in. And then we'll attach the spacer itself to the strut. Now once you've got the stud started, then you're gonna use a 5 16 Allen wrench to go ahead and secure them to the actual spacer. Now, once you've got them seated, go ahead and use your ratchet and tighten them down.
Now, once you've got your studs tightened down, now we'll go ahead and install the spacer onto the strut. We'll go ahead and put our spacer on top. And then using the supplied flat washers and nylock nuts, we'll go ahead and attach it to the top of the strut. We'll go ahead and put our nut in there. And then we'll just use our 17 millimeter socket to get it started, just to hold it in place. And then we'll put the other washers and nuts on as well. Now once you've got them started, we'll go ahead and use our ratchet to go ahead and tighten them down. Now that we've got it attached to the top of the strut, next thing will be to install it on the vehicle. But keep in mind, when you install this spacer here and you go to install it in the vehicle, you will notice that the strut has been rotated 180 degrees, which is fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just the way it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and get this installed on the truck. Now we'll go ahead and insert the top of our strut back into the strut tower and we'll secure it using the original nuts that came off of this to, to, that held it in place. Now once we get this in, there's some other work that we'll have to do to get the lower half of the strut mount attached to the lower control arm, and we'll get to that in just a second. So we're just gonna put these on loosely for right now, just to hold it in place and give us a little bit of working room when we go to connect the lower strut mount. Now this next step, I found it to be a little bit easier if we do it this way by removing the brake caliper and the rotor and also loosening up the axle nut here to allow the steering knuckle to slide off a little bit. You don't have to completely take it off, but you do need to loosen that up to make it easier because of the added height of the strut to get this lower strut mount installed. So we'll go ahead, remove our caliper using a 21 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts in the back that hold the caliper mounting bracket to the spindle. Now, I've also installed a lug nut on one of the studs here to hold the rotor in when we remove the caliper. So let's go ahead and get that done. So these are the two bolts that we're gonna be removing at the bottom and the top of our caliper mounting bracket. So we'll go ahead and use our 21 mil socket and remove those two bolts. Now we can just lift our caliper up and away from the rotor. And then we'll support this 
with a hanging tool on the frame here just to keep it out of our way. Now with that done, we'll go ahead and loosen up our axle nut. Now we'll go ahead and remove our lug nut and our rotor so that we've got less weight on the steering knuckle. And then we'll go ahead and loosen up our axle nut. Now your axle nut is either going to be a 35 or a 36 millimeter socket. It'll be 35 if it's the original in the factory nut but if it's been replaced, you'll need a 36 millimeter. Now you only need to make this even with the end of the axle itself, because like I said, we don't need to take it out. Now we'll go ahead and use a dead blow hammer and drive this in to the end, just to give us a little bit of working room here. Now this next step is probably the most difficult part of the whole process. What we're gonna have to do is pry on the lower control arm to lower it down so that we can slip our lower strut mount into the control arm. Now at this point, if you've got an extra pair of hands, it could be very beneficial to use that. We're gonna try it by ourselves and see how it goes. So let's see if we can get this thing installed. So now we'll insert our pry bar into the opening in the lower control arm, press it down. And work our strut mount inside. Now you want to be careful not to damage the CV boot here. And now that we've got it in, now we have to use our pry bar to help raise this up a little bit so that we can insert our bolt through the bottom strut mount. So now we'll put it, our pry bar underneath the strut here and we'll go ahead and pry it up so that it slides back into place. And then we may have to use our dead blow hammer to help finesse it in. Now we'll go ahead and put our nut back onto our lower strut mount bolt. And now we'll finish assembling the rest of the front end. Now we'll go ahead and tighten up our axle nut again. Just make sure that it's spindle is fully seated against the axle. And then we'll tighten up that nut. All right, now we'll go ahead and reinstall our tie rod end back into the spindle just to hold it in place while we finish up the rest of it. We'll reattach our nut. Now in order to connect our ball joint back to our steering knuckle, we're gonna need our floor jack to raise this lower control arm up far enough that the stud on the ball joint will fit back inside the steering knuckle. So let's go ahead and get that raised up and get our ball joint installed. Now we can use our pry bar on top of the upper control arm and underneath one of the coils on the spring to pry this down and get this back into place so that we can attach our nut. Now that we've got our nut attached, we can go ahead and remove our pry bar and we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Now we'll go ahead and tighten up our ball joint nut here using our 21 millimeter socket.
Now we can tighten up our tie rod nut here using our 21 millimeter socket as well. Then we'll move on to our lower strut mount bolt using our 21 millimeter socket and our 15 16 wrench. Now we'll tighten up the three nuts at the top of our strut using our 15 millimeter wrench. Now we can reattach our sway bar to the sway bar end link here. Now this is one that you have to be atten pay attention to because you need to do both end links at the same time. So you want to make sure that they're both lined up with the holes and then go ahead and lower your sway bar down. And go ahead and reinsert your rubber bushing, the washer, and the nut. Like I said, we'll do this on both sides at the same time. Now we'll go ahead and tighten that down with our 16 millimeter socket or wrench. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall our rotor. And just like before, we'll use a lug nut to hold it in place so we can install the caliper. Now we'll go ahead and install our caliper and get everything buttoned up. Now we'll go ahead and slide our caliper and pads back over our rotor. And now we'll secure it using the original hardware. Now we'll tighten those down with our 21 millimeter socket. Now we'll reattach our brake lines. Now that we've got this side done, remember to go ahead and torque everything back down to factory recommended specifications, and then repeat that whole process for the other side. All right, now we're ready to put our rear spring back together with our two inch spacer in the rear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the spring perch, and then we're gonna slip the spring back up into its original location. But at this point, I recommend that you get a buddy to help you install this because, because of the added length of the spring now, we are gonna to have to pull the axle down in order to get the spring back in. So let's go ahead and get that done. And now we'll go ahead and put our spacer in place, slide our spring up into position, and then we'll pull down on the axle and get it set into place. Now we can start putting it all back together. And now that we've got our spacer and spring installed on one side, go ahead and repeat that process for the other side so that we can put the axle up all at once. All right, now that we've got our, both of our springs in, we can go ahead and start reconnecting everything. So you're gonna to wanna to raise up your axle so that your pan hard bar lines up correctly and go ahead and insert that bolt. Put the nut on the other side. And we'll tighten that up with our 21 millimeter socket. Now 
that we can go ahead and reinstall our lower shock mount bolt and the nut. And we'll tighten it up using our 21 millimeter socket and our 21 millimeter wrench. Now we'll do the same thing for the other shot. Now we can go ahead and reconnect our sway bar. So we'll just push that up, slide the stud through, and we'll do the same thing on the other side, and then reattach our nuts. Now we'll go ahead and tighten those up with our 18 millimeter wrench. And don't forget that that stud will spin once you start tightening it up, so you will also need to use your eight millimeter socket or an eight millimeter wrench, either one will work. And then repeat the same thing for the other side. And now that we've got everything hooked back up, go ahead and lower your jack, torque everything down to factory recommended specifications. And before you really drive it anywhere, make sure you take it in and get an alignment done because you are doing suspension work and you've changed the geometry. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review and the install of this Mammoth three inch front, two inch rear leveling kit, fitting all 2009 and newer four wheel drive Ram 1500s, excluding the Rebel, TRX, and Air Ride Ram models. And remember, for all things Ram, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.